Hi, welcome to this video. So this video is a part of the popular Udemy course on hands-on natural language processing using Python. So if you really enjoy this video, then make sure to check the description section where a special coupon directly to the course is given. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this section on building your own word to vec model. So up to right now, we have been talking about models like the bag of words model, the TF-IDF model, the n-gram model and so on, right? And apart from all of those models, there's one model which is currently in trend right now and a lot of research is going on regarding it and that model is called the word to vec model. So let's get started. So talking about the bag of words or the TF-IDF model, well, these models have some problem. The first problem is that semantic information of words are not stored, right? So whenever you are using a bag of words model, as I told you that that model stores each of the words as ones or zeros, right? A word appears, then it's a one. The word does not appear, then it's a zero. And when you look at TF-IDF model, well, it does a little bit better job it gives more importance to the important words, right? And neglecting the words that are common in most of the other sentences. So TF-IDF is an improvement to bag of words model, but again, TF-IDF suffers from the same problem that semantic information is not stored. So, you know, when you are working with bag of words or TF-IDF model, you only care about the words individually, right? Whether a particular word appears, or whether the particular word does not appear but you really don't care about that you know which words appear together or what is the probability that if some words appear then another word has to appear or something like that now to get over with that problem we have the word to vec model so in the word to vec model we don't represent words as single numbers, right? We have done that before. We have represented words as single numbers in case of bag of words or TF-IDF model. But in case of word to vec models, we represent words as vectors. And those vectors have, you know, length of say 32 or 100 or 300 and so on. So what are these vectors? Well, these vectors are simply vectors of numbers. And, you know, each of these numbers correspond to uh, specific context and so on so let's really find out how words are represented so as i told you that words are represented as vectors right vectors of size 32 or 100 or 300 and so on but here in this case say that each words are represented in two dimensions right so these are vectors of size 2 and we have these two words the word king which has the vectors of you know 2 and 6 and the word queen which has the vector values of 2.2 and 6.3 so say we have another word over here like the word life which has the values 8 and 3 so as you can see you know the word king and the word queen are related to each other right and that's the reason why these two words appear together whereas the word life has nothing to do with king and queen so that's the reason why the life is so far away in the vector space from these king and queen words so here we can do one thing you know when you are representing words as vectors then we can also add or subtract vectors right similarly we can also add and subtract words so it has been found out by a research conducted in google that when you create a word to vec model out of a huge corpus like the whole wikipedia corpus then if you do something like king minus man plus woman using the information stored in the word to vec model or the word vectors then you get a vector that pretty much is the same as the vector of queen right so king minus man plus woman is a queen so just think how much semantic information is stored over here so the model is able to predict the relationship between different words right so here I have another example. So Sachin Tendulkar is the Roger Federer of cricket. Now Sachin Tendulkar is a great player of cricket and Roger Federer is a great player of tennis, right? And here I've just did written here something like, you know, one player is the other player of his own game or something like that. So Sachin Tendulkar is the Roger Federer of cricket. So if I write here Roger Federer minus tennis plus cricket, then you should get Sachin Tendulkar, right? So this is pretty much the kind of information that I'm talking about and, you know, just think how much semantic information it has stored over here, right? So 
let's find out how do we really build such models you know we have been talking about how much semantic information is preserved the vectors of length 32 and so on but how do we really create such models well the first thing that we have to do to create this word to vec models is that we need a huge amount of data you know to create tfidf or bag of words model we really didn't require that much of data we can create a tfidf or bag of words model using you know even three sentences but we really can't do it using for word to vec models to create an efficient word to vec model we need a hell lot of data you know just say the whole wikipedia corpus so every single article written in english wikipedia we need all of that to train our word to vec model so first scrape through a huge data set like the whole wikipedia that's step 1 and that's not what we are going to do for this example so next is create a matrix with all the unique words in the data set and the matrix rep represents the occurrence relation between the words right so we have the data say we have the data and then we have to create a matrix with all the unique words in the data set so say this is our data set we have again those three sentences from before right it's going to rain today today i'm not going outside i'm going to watch the season premiere so what i have done over here is that i have written the 10 most frequent words in this data set so you know you can just create a histogram and then sort that histogram and filter it and get the top 10 words and something like that but i haven't written those steps over here so these are the best words from this data set and now i am going to create a matrix that represents the occurrence relation between these words and that matrix will look like this so you know in the rows i have the words in the columns i have the words and now we just have to fill up all of these cells right so what is this cell well this cell is going and going so what is the occurrence relation between going and going well it's nothing but how many times going has appeared in a specific sentence but when we are talking about going and to then we are going to write here the number of times going has appeared along with to in a sentence so you know for going and going we have to write here three right because in three sentences going has appeared but going and to well in the first sentence going as a going and to has appeared together and also in the third sentence they have appeared together so we can write here to similarly for going and today we have one sentence and we have another sentence so this another two over here similarly for going and i going and am it is rain or not outside so for all of these we have to fill these values over here right similarly for two we have to fill the values for today we have to fill the values and we have to pretty much do it for rest of the different words so this is our word matrix right we got our word matrix and if you look at this matrix then it stores the semantic relation right because just by looking at this matrix we can say that you know what this word today has appeared with this word going twice and this word today has appeared with the word outside once so that means that the word today and going have more association rather than the word today and outside right so we have the semantic relations preserved over here and the semantic relations are based on association of words right so which words appear together and now let's find out how can we really form vectors that we need so in the step 3 what we have to do is we have to split the matrix that we have created before into two three matrices so we have this whole matrix right and we have to split it into two matrices so we can split it like this right so we have this first matrix over here and we have this second matrix over here now say the you know and when we multiply both of these matrices we get this matrix right so if the first matrix is a and you know you, you can just look at this matrix right so this matrix is nothing but the transpose of this same this matrix right so this is the transpose of this matrix so even if we found one matrix then we can just find the other one isn't it so here it's like a multiplied by a transpose and if you do that then you will get this whole matrix so what we have to do now we have to find this matrix right we just need to find this matrix a so that later on we can transpose it and multiply it to get the whole matrix the bigger one which contains all the different values you know for the word relations and so on 
so now we have to find out these values over here right and you know here i have written dimension one and dimension two but when you are really working on a real world problem you might be working with dimension 100 or 300 or even more than that so these will be the different values right we will have dimension one you know goings value in dimension one then goings value in dimension two and so on so for each of the words we will have a vector like this right x1 going x2 going and x300 going and this is pretty much what we have to form so when we have these vectors right for from here if we have the vectors for all of the different words then we have pretty much figured out and we have created our own word to vec model and if you look at the different vectors then they will have a relation between themselves right because we are multiplying this matrix with the same matrix while you know in transport transposed order and we are getting the bigger matrix right so that's the reason why they also have semantic information stored even in this form so this is our word vector we have to find the word vector for all the different words and we will get our word to vec model so if you really want to know more about word to vec then i would suggest you to read this paper you know efficient estimation of word representations in vector space this is the original paper of word to vec from google and you know you will get to learn a lot more than what i have said over here so have a look at this paper read it if you want and in the next video we are going to start training our own word to vec models and so on that's it and i will see you in the next one